In the last video, we started looking at places of articulation. We looked at articulators, which are any part of your mouth that is involved in producing a sound. For example, your lips, your tongue, the back of your teeth are articulators. Whenever you produce a sound, there is a contact or an action by those articulators. For example, when you make an M or a B, both lips have contact with one another. Bob, for example. Because that's a place where you have an action from the articulators, we call that a place of articulation. And we saw, for example, bilabial articulation with two lips, Bob. Um, we had a labiodental articulation with teeth and lips. We had alveolar, where the tip of your tongue touches the alveolar ridge. But that's all the time we had, and there's so many more that we didn't look at. So this is what we're going to be doing in this second video. One of the places of articulation is the uvular place of articulation, where you have your uvula or your dangly thing, the dangly thing on the back of your throat. That's a place where consonants happen. So here we have the phonetic alphabet again, as and as I mentioned, we have bilabial place of articulation, labiodental, alveolar, postalveolar, um, pa, fa, ta, alveolar ridge sha, where your tongue slightly past the alveolar ridge, but then we didn't look at any of this table. So this is what we're going to be doing now. The first one we're going to be looking at is the retroflex articulation. Retroflexes are not so much a place, but a, a way in which your tongue has contact with your alveolar ridge. In a regular T, for example, the tip of your tongue makes contact with the alveolar ridge. In a retroflex T, your tongue is curled up a little bit. So it uh, makes contact with the alveolar ridge in a curled up state, sort of like with the bottom of your tongue. Ta, ta, ta. This sound, these make the following sounds. Ta, a ta, da, a da, na, a na, sha, a sha, ta, a ta. So again, your tongue is curled up so that the bottom of your tongue is hitting the alveolar ridge. That's a retroflex articulation. Many languages have retroflexes. For example, Mandarin has an alveolar S and a retroflex S. For example, the word san three has an alveolar S but the word shan, mountain, has a retroflex. San, shan, san, shan, three versus mountain. Hindi also makes retroflex distinctions. So, for example, these are the words tal, tal. And by the way, these two dots here that look like a colon, that is, makes the vowel long. It indicates that the vowel is pronounced long. So this word is tal with an alveolar T, and this word is tal with a retroflex. Tal, 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 tal. And in the Hindi writing system, of course, there's a different letter for the alveolar and the retroflexes. And the IPA also has different letters because they make different sounds. Rhythm to postpone. Tal, tal. So that is the retroflex articulation. In the palatal articulation, the body of your tongue makes contact with your heart palate, which is past the alveolar ridge. English has a uh, palatal sound, the approximate yes. So try to say it yourself, and you notice how the body of your tongue sort of goes close to the roof of your mouth, but it doesn't quite touch it. Yes, yes. We call that an approximant. There's languages that have more palatal consonants. For example, Spanish has the very famous ñ. Uh, these two words, peña, pena, are the only difference between them is that this is an alveolar n and this is a palatal ñ. Pena, alveolar, peña, a kind of cliff. This is a palatal articulation. Ña, ña, ña. Peña. 
We also have a palatal consonant um, for this word, pojo, pojo. So this one has uh, is this one is contact between the heart uh, the heart palate and the roof of, the of your tongue, pojo, pojo. By the way, some dialects also pronounce this the same as the this English sound, pollo, pojo. The next articulation we're going to look at is the velar articulation. And English has a couple of sounds here. For example, this one, which is the first sound of car. So as you can see, k, the K, this vowel, which we'll look at later, and the R, the alveolar approximant, car, car. This is the transcription or international phonetic alphabet transcription of this orthographic form, the English word car. There's uh, English has a nasal velar here, the NG for gong, which is different from gone. This is an alveolar gone. This is a velar gong. You give it a try. Gong. You'll see that the tongue is not touching your alveolar ridge. It's the back of your tongue touching sort of the roof of your mouth. Gong. Spanish also has uh, velar sounds. For example, this consonant here has the sound ja, ja, jamón, for him, jamón. Our next articulation are the articulations are the uvular and pharyngeal articulations. English doesn't use these, but many languages do. So, for example, the uvular, again, is the little dangly thing in the back of your mouth. Um, French has a sound there, the ra, ru, and ru. Ru, ru. This one is wheel, this one is route. Ru, ru, ru. <laughs> uh, Quechua has them. This is an, a velar K, and this is a uvular ka. Kuya, koya, kuya, koya. The back of the tongue is making contact with the uvular region. Ka, 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 ga, ga, nga, nga, nga. That's sort of what they sound like. Arabic, modern standard Arabic, was has quite a bit of sounds in the uvular region. For example, the difference between the velar kirsch and the uvular kirsch, 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 ke, ke, kirsch, kirsch. It also has this one, the same sound as in French, roule, roule, for ghoul. The pharyngeal articulation is a little bit further back uh, in this part of your throat, the pharynx. Arabic has sounds there, for example, hemmed, hemmed, and Amd, amd, praised and baptized. Hemd, amd. And finally, English has glottal articulations. So, for example, this one we call glottal stop, which is the little pause in between uh oh, uh oh, as we have here. And English has this sound here, which is had, had. So, as you can see, the International Phonetic Alphabet has place of articulation as a way to describe sounds, bilabial, velar, uvular, and so forth. Um, consonants have to be described using three dimensions, place, and what we'll study next, manner of articulation, which is how your air exits through your mouth, and voicing, whether the vocal cords are engaged or not.